Hey guys, it's Chris from Domestic Chris here and I'm coming to you as part of a collaboration. Uh, Trish from um, Just So Trish and Tangy from The Tanger's Wife and this all actually was started by the Texas Boys and some other people, I'll be sure to put the links down in the comments below, have uh, started and participated in this collab and I wanna go ahead and jump off and get started with that too. If you're new to my channel, you might notice I haven't been around for a while. It's been a pretty crazy year, but I focus a lot on, um, I've done weight loss series. Check that out. I've done how to save money for a trip to Disney or really anything else that you want to save money for. You can check that out. And in the past, I've done some homeschooling videos and I'll go ahead and link to that too. And now that we are back to homeschooling, when I finished my nursing degree, yeah, I'm a nurse too, <laughs> I, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, put my children in public school. My youngest did um, kindergarten and uh, pre-K, and my oldest did kindergarten and first grade. So now they're home. They wanted to start before really school was even out. <laughs> um, they're ready. We have um, dabbled in homeschooling in the past and knew it was uh, definitely what we were going to be returning to, that that was not a permanent situation. So this collab is 10 reasons why we homeschool as well as five ways hows that we do homeschool. So I'll start this on my list with me. Um, Number one, these aren't necessarily in any particular order, but I'm selfish. I haven't heard that kind of for a while, uh, but when it comes to my children, I enjoy being with them. It's been so nice being home with them. I'm not in school anymore. They're not in school anymore. I work weekend nights, so while I'm working, they're sleeping, and my husband gets to spend time with them while I'm sleeping and that's really strengthened their bond. It's strengthened our bond and my children are by no means perfect angels, but we have really been enjoying our time together more so than we even did before. It would always make me sad <laughs> and maybe parents don't really mean it like this, but I don't know how else it comes across, but they would say things like, Oh, I just could never be home with my children like that. I can't stand them. You know, I can't be with them very long. I mean, I've heard this from more than one person. And I'm like, these are your children. And sometimes they, I'm like, please don't say that when you're around them. You'll give them like a complex. It's terrible. Terrible. And surely these parents don't really mean that. But it speaks a lot to the environment. Like, you're raising them, right? They complain a lot about their friends, things like that. So anyhow. Number one, I'm selfish. I want to spend time with them. Number two, customization, right? I um, have the ability, as much as I can with anything, to customize my children's education. For example, my oldest daughter dreams of being the world's best fashion designer. Not just any, the world's best fashion designer. <laughs> so she doesn't necessarily want to sew the clothes. That is important for me that she learns how to do that, but she wants to design clothing, she makes paper dolls, she um, designs dresses, she has this, that's what she wants to do. She's very artistic. So I can focus her education in that way. She's done some biographical reading about Coco Chanel and some other um, designers. It's just a part of it. She's in second grade. So we're just kind of working our way in there. But if that's what she says she wants to do, as long as she says she wants to do that, we're gonna run with it. My younger daughter, she kind of flip-flops in what she says she wants to do. She's six, but innately she loves to do like beauty things. She loves to fix hair, makeup. My mother-in-law lets her color her hair. <laughs> she has on occasion. Um, she does a pretty good job. So anyhow, she really is into cosmetology kinds of things. She's very stylish and I, have always envisioned that my children would um, do cosmetology at our um, local school just because um, I think it's an important life skill to have. Whether, I mean, I wasted so much money when we were in the army. My husband got $20 haircut every week. When I was a junior, I did that, but I didn't finish. I was not competent in my men's haircuts and he would not let me cut his hair nor let my friend who was a stylist do it. I mean, he would let her do it. So that saved us money sometimes 
he wouldn't let her have enough lessons to teach me how. So anyhow, I'm, you know, working towards um, her skill set in that area and encouraging her to paint her fingernails for fun and get her design books and allow her to really craft her skill in that area. And again, we'll see how it goes. But I, I can do that for other areas as well as number three, religion. We um, are members of the Church of Christ and I like any other Christians, right? I feel like the Lord has pressed on my heart and really desires parents to be not only their first and most important education educator, but the main source of their education. And it's very important to us that we teach them the Bible. Uh, if we can pray and get through <laughs> some Bible, then that's a good start to our day. And if we do that and the day kind of goes downhill with errands and other things, we've made the scriptures and the Bible our priority. I'm going to Bible class. I can usually get to church Sunday mornings, uh, not Sunday evenings. That's when I'm on my way to work. And Wednesday evenings we can go. So that time, working on our lessons in between, those are important to us. Uh, our number one goal is to make it to heaven. And our number two goal is to bring as many people with us as we can. And when we can have those Christian influences throughout our everyday it makes it more likely, hopefully, that that will happen. If I trade up my children in the way they should go when they are older, they will not depart from it. That's my prayer. So, also, rest. Number four reason is rest. I hated getting my kids up to go to school in the morning and picking them up after school, and I did it. My kids did not ride a bus. I told them that I wanted to have that time with them, that I wanted to I was going to miss them all day and I did and I wanted to take them to school and I wanted to pick them up that they would have to have gotten up even earlier to get on the bus for a long bus ride and that they would get home even later if they rode the bus. So nope, I took my kids to school. So we were up early and we went to bed early, which bedtime and morning time, have any of you parents that previously had your children in public school know, it's a struggle. And I hated it, I hated it. My favorite time of day is reading to my children. If our day got out of hand and we weren't able to have that time in the evening to read, and they had to go to bed, because they had to get up and they had to get dressed and they had to eat. and. Now, bedtime is a little bit later. It's still decent time, but instead of having to be in bed at eight o'clock, they can go to bed at nine and they can read quietly, quietly reading, right? Not playtime. <laughs> they read to themselves, um, read to each other. Beyond the reading we've done as a family, I'm so excited about that. So I love that we can rest and we don't have to get up in the morning. If we've had a long day the night before doing staying late talking to friends after church, um, visiting with family extra long, playing a game, whatever. I don't need to rush them up in the morning. We have things that we need to do, but I don't have to rush them to go anywhere because we're gonna mostly be here in the mornings. So, number five, I have concerns about the public school system and teachers are great, right? Not everybody is bashing teachers. They're doing the best they can. Their hands are often tied. But my concerns aren't just with the indoctrin indoctrination of the um, policies and procedures and the dumbing down and the retelling of history. I'm also concerned with the outside influences, right? We have a certain language in our home we don't want it, our children to use. My husband and I don't use it. We don't listen to music that includes it. We don't watch television shows with our children that include that kind of, th you know, vulgarity of varying levels, right? We don't say shut up. We don't say, you know, we're trying to say stupid and dumb and little things like that on top of the other things. So when my kids come home with a bad habit, um, a phrase that they're using and I know they haven't heard it from us, I don't like it. I have a friend who's starting homeschool this year who says she hates that she was having to reteach and unteach whatever her children were picking up at school. So we don't want to do that. Six, um, sharing. I want to be able to share the experiences that I did enjoy as a student or as a young child with my children and within the time constraints of our school day. I mean, I knew this before I ever had kids. My husband and I were in Iraq and we had been married for a few years and when I was working nights and in the clinic, I would look up things. Why weren't there any more book of the month clubs? I had, um, 
older officers and enlisted people that would tell me programs that they had shared with their children. I was making lists. I wanted to share. I was remembering, oh, reading Rainbow, um, these, uh, you know, weekly readers. And I don't know, those are mini page from the newspaper, uh, just um, silly things, books, uh, Maniac McGee, Johnny Tremaine, American Girl, different things. And I wanted to share that with my children. On top of sharing these um, things that I remember, stories and activities like soap maps and um, carving people out of ivory soap, <laughs> I wanted to share with them the number seven reason we homeschool, and that is traveling. I love to travel, and I love to travel by car. My grandparents would take me every summer, um, well, well, the four summers in a row. So my grandfather had a stroke from Indiana all the way out west to California to visit with my cousin and her family. And I've been to Yellowstone, the Grand Canyon, um, South Dakota to the Corn Palace, Mount Rushmore, uh, Cherokee reservations. We have Cherokee in our family. Uh, I, the Golden Gate Bridge, I've seen the beach. I mean, I've done amazing things traveling and I used to live in Orlando and I love Disney World <laughs> and I, I just love, I love to travel and I love that we have the ability to travel and include audiobooks in the car and different things that I love and remember with my children pretty much any time our schedule allows and I hold dear in to my heart those memories and that time I had with my grandparents and I want to have that with my children and I don't want to feel rushed I've been to Disney in the summertime. <laughs> I, I don't like having someone telling me what I had to do. I don't want to be under their thumb. So number eight, kind of a silly one, but um, screen time. I noticed, I thought it was cool at first. So my daughter went to kindergarten, they sent her home with an iPad and I thought, oh, this would be so great. I want to see what kind of apps they're using so that we can incorporate these into our homeschool life later. Nearly everything they did was on the iPad. She had homework assignments on the iPad. When she was, you know, waiting for me to pick her from school, she was taking a bajillion selfies of her. I mean, oh my goodness, all of these pictures of her friends and stuff. Really, and it's all the time. Can I get your phone? Can I get your phone? Can I do this? Can I do this? I'm like, whoa, no. So we have definitely, I mean, I wouldn't even let them use it outside of homes, uh, homework when they were home with it because... If I did, they would just be on it all the time. We don't watch very much TV around here. And when my kids ask me sometimes, well, why can't we watch this show? Or why can't we watch that show? A, we don't have regular television, so they're speaking normally of Netflix programs. I say, girls, there's a limited time in the day. There's limited things for us to do. And there's a lot better things we can watch and do with our time than this particular thing. Now, that doesn't mean my kids don't watch anything fun, but we don't watch certain things that I definitely feel are a waste of our time. So screen time is important to me because I want to focus on outdoor time. That's the number nine reason that we homeschool. I want my kids to be able to go outside. We live on two acres of land. We've got a play set. We've got a playhouse. We've got a huge drive that they can ride their bikes on. Um, we've got, I'm looking at it, but <laughs> I'm in front of the window and I can see these pine trees and they have this special, really strangely shaped pine tree that they love to climb in and play. You know, they love to be outside and you know, while they're really into kind of Pokemon cards right now, my nephew got them onto that and they're starting to be like, oh, I had this one, I had this one, I had this one. I want them to know the kinds of trees we have in our yard. I want them to know what kinds of things grow in our yard that they can eat. Back to the land kind of things in a um, necessary kind of way. We need sunshine. I just read uh, Richard Louv's, uh Last Child in the Woods. I'll link that down below check it out from your library. It's amazing. This idea of nature deficit disorder and the effect that that has on our children. It's amazing. So the number 10 reason why we homeschool is the all important socialization, right? If you haven't picked up, I'm a pretty social person and I'm not like one of those introverted people who can be cool on uh, when I'm by myself. I love people. I love going places and meeting new people and talking to people and not only sharing my story but hearing their story. Uh, that's one of my favorite parts about being a nurse. I talk to my patients. I would rather be on my feet till 11 o'clock because I've spent 20 minutes with my patient getting to know them, letting them get to know some things about me, this person who's going to be taking care of them. Love it. Love people. I want my children to have a servant's heart and to love people. 
and I don't want them to just socialize with 25 of their peers, <laughs> right? I want them to socialize with other adults. I want them to know how to take care of and handle younger children. I hope to have a, some more babies here soon. I want them to um, be exposed to people of differing abilities than themselves. I don't want them to shy away when they see them in public as much as I can help it. I want them to be um, aware of the world around them but at the same time have a safe um, barrier uh, and protect them, yes, from some things I don't want them to expose to. So those are my top 10 reasons, and we're at 16 minutes, so I'm gonna try to do these top five reasons how I homeschool quickly. So all of them start with R except for this one, and it's pretty important, and that is pray. Prayer is so important to our homeschool, and I'm sure to many of yours as well. I know there's a growing secular um, homeschool group, and you know we're so glad that people are reaching out because there's lots of reasons why and how it's important to homeschool your children. But for our family, we want to serve the Lord, and so prayer is important. We pray for our days. We, you know, we're thankful for the blessing and opportunity that we have to homeschool in America, and and prayer is a huge part. So be praying for your homeschool day. All right, then read, 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 lots and lots of books, read aloud, listen to read alouds, read silently, let your kids see you read, put your phone down <laughs> when you're done watching this video and take a few minutes to read a book. You know, I have stacks of books. These are mostly just kind of pretty on my bed because they're old books and they're pretty in my bedroom. Anyhow, I have stacks of books that I get from the library and I have this deep desire to want to read them and then I, you know, get through one and I've renewed it six times and it's really, I have to turn it in and I'm halfway through. So I do read lots and lots of children's books, but you know, make sure to take time to read for yourself as well and assign your children some reading also. But reading is a big part of your homeschool. So number three, how is <sighs> relax relax you don't have to do every page in your workbook you don't have to watch every minute of a certain program if you can't get into it put it down you don't have to read the entire book if you don't like a book don't do it relax this is your homeschool these are your children this is your life right homeschooling really is a lifestyle relax and enjoy it Okay, then we're gonna have to really have a routine. I'm so glad that Pam Barnhill just came out, uh, put it down below also to her Homeschool Solutions podcast. Uh, somewhere read about, you know, you really need a routine and you need to have some kind of scheduling-ish to your day, at least a time allowed where this is school. Don't schedule dentist appointments during school time. Um, go to field trips during school time. Make sure that you're doing the things that you need to do during the school time. And so you need to have maybe a morning routine where you do certain things and you have an evening routine where you do certain things. But having a routine, my kids know Certain things have to be done. I got this idea from the unlikely homeschool. <laughs> uh, you got to have your clothes on, your bed made, your room picked up before you can eat breakfast. <laughs> I have to set a timer with them sometimes like, okay, girls, you've got 10 more minutes. You should already be done. <laughs> so anyhow, have a routine. And then remember why. Remember those 10 reasons why we were just talking about because burnout's gonna come. I haven't had it yet, but I hear so much about it. I'm sure at some point I'm gonna get tired of it. So I need to remember why I'm doing this. I need to look at these sweet little people in my life and remember this is why. This is why I'm here. So Thank you guys so much for joining me. Again, I'm going to have the collab uh, located up here. If you feel inclined to participate in this collab, please do and let me know in the comment box below. If you like this video, give me a big thumbs up and let me that'll let me know you kind of want to hear some more things about this. Homeschooling is definitely going to be coming up more on the channel. I'm also going to have for you some information about our upcoming Disney cruise soon. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you real soon.